I have a confession to make. I did this video series about uh, Cross Forest PKI auto enrollment scenario. It worked great in the lab, but I had a terrible time making it work in production. So let's review here. We've copied the AACO user and computer auto enroll certificates. We've applied the appropriate permissions to these certificates for uh, BB Co users and computers to auto enroll. We've published these certificates in AA Co PKI. In BB Co, we have uh, configured group policy to auto enroll user and computer certificates. You'll see all that here over the next 30 seconds. We use PKI Sync to copy the certificate templates, copy uh, AACO PKI information, including the OIDs and the CA information. Of course, we, in the previous uh, video, set up a uh, trusted root certificate and etc. So we're going to see all that come together here. But there, we've copied the certificate templates. Now we copy OID and CA information. It's important to watch those go by and see what copies and what doesn't. We'll talk about that more later. Now we're just looking and seeing the output of our work. You can see the OIDs. We'll see the CA information. We see the certificate templates are in place. Everything's there. But when using the MMC with the certificates uh, plug-in, you uh, try to request a certificate from AACO, and you see this error for both the user and the computer auto-enroll certificate while on a BBCO computer. This was looking like a dead end. So the security guys requested a couple more certificates. I created those certificate templates in AACO, published them, assigned the permissions, etc. And then I used PKI Sync to copy them and the OID information. While the OID information was copying, I saw not two items copied, but actually four items copied. And lo and behold, now my computer certificate auto-enrolled. Sadly, though, the user certificate did not auto-enroll, so we dug a little deeper. Uh, thanks to an observation by one of my co-workers, uh, while we were troubleshooting another user's auto-enrollment issue, we realized that the user has an attribute where their certificates are stored in Active Directory, and that's a result of uh, clicking this tick box that says Publish Certificates in Active Directory. Here we see, yeah, I blurred them out so you wouldn't 
waste your time trying to decode the certificate information, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But this is the user certificate attribute of a user in our production environment. And interestingly enough, this is a multi-valued attribute. And we're going to read the specification here that says this multi-valued attribute actually has a particular size limitation of 32768. So if you accumulate enough certificates in Active Directory in that attribute, you won't be able to accumulate any more. Interesting twist. So now that we know the computer certificate can auto-enroll, I embarked on removing all of the certificates from my attribute on my user object. And of course, I was configured to auto-enroll in the test certificate. Here's a couple of different PowerShell solutions for uh, clearing all of the certificates out of the user certificate attribute. Uh, why are those certificates there? They could be used for encrypting email etc. But I know within our environment we're really not using them so we have to question why we have that checkbox. So with the user certificate now issued and the computer certificate now issued both auto enrolled from across the forest uh, just a word of warning, make sure to do everything in the appropriate order. First of all, the permissions have to be applied to the template. The template has to be published. You use PKI Sync to copy the certificate template to the account forest from the resource forest. Then you would copy the OID information for those certificates that you just copied so that uh, everybody would know the information required to issue that certificate. Uh, yeah, please uh, review the article and the other videos. They'll all be linked here. Thank you.